What it do y'all and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to go ahead and talk about the Hourglass 2023 new palette. So if you haven't heard about these palettes, these are palettes that Hourglass features every holiday season for I don't even know how long at this point. In the inside of each palette, there are six different shades. Sometimes they're new, sometimes they're old. And the last two years, they have allowed you to customize the palette. So for example, I have the jelly outside, but I have the snake inside. The snake inside for this year was reminiscent of the dark skin friendly palette that they have available and I not only take you guys through of course this palette I also take you guys through the other two hourglass palettes that I have I also have the 2022 holiday release and then I also have a trio from hourglass and this is their volume 3 lighting palette so I talk about all of these I do comparisons in try on a form and yeah I just wanted to talk about all of these I don't remember the price of the trio, but I will have that flashing across the screen right now. And last year's palette was $85. This year's palette is $90. At the point of me filming this video, I believe a 20% off code is still available. So I will have that down below in the description box so that it's easy and accessible for you guys. I don't want this intro to be too, too long. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I wasn't planning on this being so like fully encompassing, but now that I'm here, we might as well finish up and talk really, really in detail. So let's get into the details of this year's holiday palette. So in the palette, there is 0 0.40 ounces or 1.4 grams in each individual shade. From left to right, we have the shades Radiant Light in their Finishing Powder, Coral Haze in their Blush, Infinite Strobe Light in the Metallic Strobe Powder, Sunbeam in their Blush Formula, Mystic Flush in their Blush Formula, Solar Bronze in their Bronzer Formula. This has a 12 month shelf life. It is made in Italy. It is distributed through by the Kingdom Animal foundation or something in California and yeah it does not state on the packaging that this particular product is cruelty free then let's go into the 2022 ambient lighting powder palette this happens to be the tiger palette so once again from left to right we have transcendent Transcendent Light, which is their finishing powder, Brilliant Globe Strobe Light, which is their metallic strobe powder, Glow, Burnished Glow, which is their blush formulation, Divine Strobe Light, which is the metallic strobe powder, Copper Flush Strobe Light, which is the metallic strobe powder, and then Iridescent rose which is in their blush formula once again this has 0 0.04 ounces or 1.46 grams for each individual pan it is made in italy it is once again distributed from the area of venice california and it does have a 12 month shelf life also this palette does not indicate that it is cruelty free last palette that i will be showcasing in this video is their ambient lighting palette volume three from left to right again we have the powders in ethereal light transcendent light and prismatic strobe light the prismatic strobe light is definitely the more highlighter formula and they call that their metallic strobe powder the transcendent light is their finishing powder and i believe ethereal light is also a trans uh e finishing powder as well this product has 10.10 ounces or three grams of product for each individual shade it once again is distributed from venice california and it is made in italy with that 12 month shelf life and once again does not indicate on the packaging that the this palette is cruelty free i do just want to say right now that at one point hourglass had made a whole huge campaign about the fact that they were going to be coming cruelty free i vaguely remember that the year that they said that was going to be happening is 2025 so in the event that you are cruelty free i will say 
kind of look into that, that may be the time that you can officially pick up anything and everything from the brand. But unfortunately, all three of these products definitely do not indicate that they are cruelty free. With that said, we are going to just go ahead and jump into the first day of me doing an application. I will do my best to have some timestamps all throughout this video, and we will be doing comparisons between all three palettes. The first day is only going to be this year's palette. The next day is going to be the two holiday palettes compared. And then today, which is of course the last day, will be this year's holiday palette and of course the ambient lighting palette. I hope this was very informative and helpful for you guys. Let's just get into it. Hey guys, so like I told you guys on Monday, I really, really wanted to play with this palette on camera for you all. I know I'm pretty late in the grand scheme of things of videos. So I'm gonna try to add some pizzazz to my video, but in the event that you wanna see my perspective, let's just get straight into it. I'm sure I had a very long intro. Okay, so I still haven't taken the plastic off. We'll just keep it there for now. And this is what the inside of my palette looks like. Now this is the inside of the snake palette with the jellyfish covering. I just preferred the jellyfish covering as I'm sure I told you guys at the beginning. Now you get one shade which they classify as a bronzer. This is in the shade solar bronze. You get a highlighter which is in the shade metallic strobe powder and infinite strobe light. Then you get the blush in the sunbeam, the finishing powder in radiant light. You get the blush in mystic flush and then the blush in coral haze. Now, oops, I went the wrong way. This is coral haze, my bad. Um, so, Right off the bat, by looking at it, I know that bronzer isn't gonna work for me, but if you are my skin tone, I do wanna just go ahead and show it for you guys. If you're wondering what the foundation I have on today, it is my By Mario 25W. So this is like my summer shade. So do keep that in mind. And then for my concealer, I have my CoverGirl Project Pan in the shade Natural Tan. So just so you guys know all the products that are on my face, I just wanted to start because that part is just not important. Okay, so I'm just going to use a, an Isium X52 because mainly my bronzer brushes are just dirty and this does pick up quite a bit of product. I'm just going to really try to pick up as much product as I can and I'm going to pat because I want to really get as much pigment as I can and you really can't see anything. You can't. So I am just going to Null that off and I'm gonna go into a bronzer that I know is gonna work. This is in the shade Deep Level 11 and I'm just gonna pull my Wayne Goss bronzer brush. I think this is in the, sh uh, the number 00 just to give me some bronze really quickly. And as you can see, you can actually see this color on my skin tone, even on this darker shade. It looks even better on like my normal shade once you know i lose all of my tan just the summer i still have the tan and i'm trying to finish up that foundation but you can still see it on this skin tone or this foundation shade so that's what i like but i'm still going to use that bronzer as a face setting powder i think it will work beautifully for that so i'm just going to actually just set my concealed zone with this powder and I actually will just go ahead and set my foundation as well because if you know this by Mario foundation, you know that it needs to be set. I actually, so far I'm liking this. Oh no, the brush is shedding. It's not the best when we come in close. It feels, I don't even wanna say it feels anything type of way. It just looks a little crusty, which is definitely interesting to me because I feel like normally people with dry skin like this, but maybe it's a radiance that I'm not used to seeing 
everywhere. Maybe that's what it is. I have natural lighting in front of me and my ceiling light on just so that you guys can see. And coming in really close, I don't know. It just feels like it looks a little scaly for what I am used to lately. It does look like it is set and it does feel like it's set, but there's just something about that powder that I don't particularly like for that process. So I'm going to try to kind of cover it up with the true finishing powder, which is in radiant light. I'm sure this is like the right type of illumination and that looks even worse. That looks like a highlighter. So I don't know if you guys can see, but if you look right there, I just applied that second powder and it is really emphasizing the pores and my scaly under eyes. I do not like that powder at all. So I'm actually going to just try to cover up with that bronzer and just try to like sweep that away. So far, that's two powders that I'm just, I'm not thinking that they work for my skin tone. I just personally don't like what I'm seeing. I'm gonna go ahead and put some setting spray. Maybe that will help these particular powders to really seep into my skin. I've been really enjoying lately this LYS natural finish. Okay, so I feel like that does a really good job at pushing products in. And since I did put that setting spray, I'm just gonna try to push all of those products in with the sponge i just really i don't think i like that powder i do not like that powder mm -mm. to me it feels like it's emphasizing my pores i don't know if it's going to look that way to you guys on camera but yeah i think i'm going to try to do a side by side so you guys can see me using this and then what i usually use because it's just it to me it's not doing the best like right here not that i ever really care about my pores but they just look emphasized my under eyes look crepey and mm -mm. Not a huge fan, not a huge fan at all. So let's keep going though. We still have some categories that I think will be kind of the best parts of this palette, which is of course the three different blushes. Now I think all three blushes from the pan look like they're gonna work on my skin tone. I don't have any cream on at all. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one over here this one looks to have a little bit more orange to it so let's go ahead and try that and whoa baby okay so already just by applying this this is more of a shimmery finish so if you're not somebody who likes a shimmery kind of blush topper or just a shimmery shade in general definitely do not check for that that is definitely a shimmery shade so i'm kind of i just feel like today is just <laughs> it's really it's running these two look a little bit more matte so let's try this marbled shade on this cheek like i said so i have the shimmery shade which is the shade sunbeam that's what's here i'm not saying it's not a pretty shade but it's radiant and i just was not necessarily prepared to put more of like a blush topper straight on my cheeks then now i'm putting on the shade coral haze okay so like i said i'm putting on that marble shade i'm sorry my camera battery lost charge and it's really taking some effort to build this up like it's really taking some effort and if you're looking on like this you really don't see much color it's really from the front angle you can see some color there so i do give it that i do want to go ahead and try the last blush which is in the shade mystic flush so i think this is kind of arguably the darkest shade so i'm gonna try that on the ball of this blush on the cheek 
And then also I'll just go ahead and put this singularly on my nose and just see how it's working. So I think for me, between all three blushes, I would choose if I had to like redo this palette, I would start off with this one and then I would branch out from that. I, yeah, honestly, I'm just not loving this palette as much as I enjoyed the tiger one last year. I'm just gonna even out my cheeks. I'm gonna put the, the blush that I prefer, which is the shade Mystic Flush. So I'm gonna put that all over this side that had the more shimmery color and I'm gonna kind of spread that there. I'm just gonna make that my base and I will add a little bit of sheen from the more radiant blush, which is in the shade Sunbeam. So I'm just gonna kind of figure out my blush really quickly with those two colors. And then I will come back to show you guys the highlighter on my skin tone. I just drowned my face with a different setting spray. I do really enjoy the LYS, but I just felt like these powders needed a little bit more drenching. So I took the Mana Kadar um, oil mattifying mist. I really like this to really drench my face to really get the products to seep in. And let me come in closely. So as you can see, I think I was able to kind of eradicate the irritating feel and like texture that I felt I had under my under eyes. They don't look the best, but they look better. And because I was able to put down that matte base and then put, because I put that matte base down and then I put the slight sheen uh, blush down, I think overall my cheeks are looking good as well. I'm finding a way to use the products that are in this palette. So let's just keep going and then we'll kind of sit back. I'll finish up my face and then I'll come back to show you guys my thoughts right now. And I'm gonna do a wear test because I really wanna see like, if this is truly worth it from a perspective of once you get the products on it lasts or if it's just not so like i said i'm gonna go in with the highlighter i'm gonna use my um my cleona cosmetics and emily violet marie collaboration brush and just really put this highlighter on you guys may not be able to catch it on my cheekbones because i already have that like shimmery blush on but i'm sure you'll catch it now on my nose and my cupid's bow and always this side you guys can kind of see better on camera and i actually do like the highlighter i really do like this highlighter which makes sense i liked the highlighter before but I'm feeling some type of way about some of these other products. I really am. So now that we have all of the products from this palette on my face, the only thing that isn't like in the final, final look is this more marbled blush. I didn't really use that. I just have on my cheeks the combination of this. This is setting my face. I don't have this trans or this um no i have this highlighter on and i do not have this shade on really at all either i just thought that that was just too illuminating i really didn't like it so i'm gonna hop off camera finish up the rest of my face in another video and then i will come back to show you guys what it's looking like and then we will kind of talk about what i'm feeling about my base as it is now and kind of we'll see how it does throughout the day Okay guys, so we are now in to wearing this palette for about 40 or so minutes. It took me some time to get the separate pieces that I needed to, to get done for my other video. And what I will say is that it has settled in. Is this, once again, my most favorite under eye section? No. 
there is a sheen to this powder to these finishing powders that i am just not particularly a fan of and maybe it was one of those things where i should know not to use them as a setting powder because it's called a finishing powder but i see people doing it all the time so that is my mistake for not knowing based on my preferences how i should use this particular palette but the cheek products i will say the cheeks look really really pretty so after you learn how to use the blushes and then of course the highlighter I never had an issue con considering that that would work I think that the biggest thing for me is just it's just those finishing powders they just don't seem to really work for my makeup application personally okay guys so in the first clip that you guys just saw you saw me playing with the jelly palette or i'm sorry you actually saw me playing with the what palette is this you guys saw me playing with the snake palette by itself today what i'm gonna do is do a comparison i know so many people have done comparisons by now but i figured i'd just do my two cents because i find a lot of people have been really enjoying this year's palette and i just personally have not so i already put on my general base product so i have my lys primer i'm continuing to test out this euphoria foundation in for 50 and then i just have my project pan concealer and everything as always will be listed and linked down below now what i am going to do is try to pull some brushes i'm still unpacking from my trip so things are a little bit in disarray and i'm still taking my stuff out of my little travel bag i'm going to use the same exact brush because these are brushes that i really like for these techniques and since i don't have duplicates that will give the same amount of product i just want it to be very true and then i will clean them off in between so on my left side is going to be this year's palette and on my right is going to be last year's palette now for the way that they expect us to use this palette they expect that this shade be the kind of under eye powder and once again that shade is in radiant light and they call this their finishing powder but a lot of people use their finishing powders as setting powders so i'm just going to dash a bit oops, almost put it on the wrong side and i'm just going to tap this is how i apply my powder i just tap in the zones and i'm going to try to make this as even as possible so it may not look like there's a huge difference but i will come up in between each powder application that you so you guys can see the difference in the actual application now i'm going to open up the tiger palette if i can okay and for the tiger palette there's only really one powder and that is their finishing powder in transcendent light so that's the only powder that they have there's not even a bronzer in this so i'm actually just going to use that as my under eye setting powder because that's how this palette was created and thought to be done okay and so just from my perspective this side is just a lot more natural a lot more seamless and because of the hourglass kind of aesthetic this is the side that i think they expect the powder to look like on my skin tone coming in close I don't know if you guys can see but there is definitely a sheen under this eye there's a sheen under both eyes but this one is just a little bit more jarring because it's lighter i don't know if you'll be able to see i might need to dim my lights even more overall personally for me i am definitely enjoying this side the side with the 2022 palette a lot more right now than the side with the 2021 palette then we go to face setting powders but they define as an actual bronzer so let me go ahead and set my face very quickly i'm going to set my face on both sides with the same exact powder this is just my project pan powder from um, seam and this is their no pore effect powder on my skin which is 
appalling if you know me, but we will get some bronze action. Don't you worry. I'm just going to set my nose because I didn't put any powder there either. Okay, so in the 2023 palette, they state that this is supposed to be a bronzer. And this is the bronzer in Solar Bronze. This is the shade. And now that I've set my face, I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate that particular shade for you guys. And okay, I'm just going to use this big fluffy um, Royal Anand Lip royal and land nickel brush and like i said this is in the shade solar bronze the difficulty with this particular like formulation and packaging is that if you were somebody like me and likes bigger brushes you really do have to watch where your brush goes or you can accidentally pick up a blush or a highlighter that's in a neighboring area and kind of just it just is not going to look good you know so this is the product applied and as you can see on my skin tone it's it's very very light if you can even see it to me i don't see any true relevant difference at all and like i said for 2022's palette they didn't even have a bronzer they just had this powder because they knew that's all it was going to be able to do is set deep tones which this palette was supposed to be geared towards same as this palette this palette is supposed to be geared towards deep tones but they still claim for this to actually be a bronzer it's not at least not on my skin tone and as i like to always emphasize i am far from the deepest skin tone we got that in my opinion hourglass should be catering towards specifically in their powders i feel like they're pretty good on being a inclusive in other parts of their range just for some reason their powders they just cannot get it so i gotta bronze my face i just don't do no bronzer so i'm just gonna pull my house labs bronzer and i'm just gonna go ahead and use this omnia brush just because i have it and in the event that you are interested this is in the shade deep 11. and as you can see there's just a nice amount of bronze now. It's not a lot. It's not super apparent, but you can definitely see some dimension being built on my face. And if you see any random white things, that Omnia brush sheds a lot. That's why I don't use it anymore. No need to zoom in because there's really no good comparison. The biggest thing about these palettes, I feel, are the blushes. And last time I showed you guys this one is pretty much on my skin tone, more of a blush topper where you have these two to be more true blushes. And if memory serves me correct, this is the shade that is actually more apparent on my skin tone. And this one is a little bit lighter because you get a lot more of that lighter tone than the darker, darker tone in that marble. So what I'm going to do is probably combine these two because they will be a similar combination in my head to this tone in this tone and i will explain the tones and the colors in just a second so i'm gonna use this sonia g Inochigi pro i'm sorry if i pronounced that incorrectly and like i said the two plus the two blushes that i'm gonna be working with is sunbeam which is right here and then mystic flush so those are the two blushes that i'm going to be working with for this look i'm actually going to put the mystic flush down first because that's the matte tone i want that to be the one that has the most pigment in my face and then i will just kind of lightly layer on top the other tone and i will say with this sonia g brush sonia g brushes tend to apply a light layer of product so let me maybe get a different brush because i want you guys to see true to the application how those products apply even though i showed them yesterday might as well show them again so i'm going to start working once again into that i think the shade is sunbeam and we're just going to work and this is one of my favorite powder brush um not only shapes but actual the my favorite powder brushes for my blush so we're just gonna get a nice application here and i'm gonna work it a little bit closer 
to the part bridge of my nose just have a nice little draping effect and now I'm gonna add the more shimmery tone just to bring slightly more warmth and an orange nice orange sheen okay so that is that side with those two shades and now I'm just gonna clean off my brush And we are going to try to get a very similar look with these two products. And these two, in case it helps, this shade right here is Iridescent Rose. And then this one is actually a Metallic Strobe Powder in Copper Flash Strobe Light. But I believe that it will work um as you know a little bit of warm sheen if not i might use the other strobe light that is on the bottom row we'll see but either way i'm definitely going to focus on this in iridescent rose as a majority of the shade and what i will say is that this particular shade actually has a sheen to it because of the formulation so i'm not going to get as much color on this side as quickly as I do the other side because the other side is literally just a straight up matte there's no sheen to that color so I think that's honestly as good as it's going to get for building that up and then I'm just going to go into the tone that I said I was going to top this off with which is the more orangey tone and yeah that's pretty much a similar effect with this kind of light tapping motion and this brush so once again i'm not sure if you guys can see in the viewfinder it doesn't look very apparent but on this side to me i was just able to really concentrate the sheen where i wanted and i just got more pigment easier whereas this side to me it was a lot more of a sheen in that original blush and so when i topped it off with that other blush or um, highlighter as it were it just it was a different effect so if I personally had to choose between the two sides specifically when it comes to blush I would actually go ahead and choose this year's combination I just think that this side works best on my darker skin tone and it just shows off my features in a better light than this side especially because that blush is a little bit too highlighty and I just don't get enough pigment in the way that they marbled that and that comes with the territory with those marbled shades okay last up when it comes to these palettes is of course highlighter when we're looking back at last or this year's palette there's only really one highlighter in my opinion for this palette and that is this baby over here and that is in the shade infinite strobe light in their metallic strobe powder formulation so i'm just going to use one of my favorite brushes you guys know this if you follow my channel this is a sigma brush and i'm just going to really work that powder in very very nice and i'm going to also put that at the cupid's bow and i'll take the other shade and put that on my nose and the bridge of my nose okay so that's the completed kind of cheek for this year's palette and then i can flip my brush over and for last year's palette you had a lot more highlighters because these two are highlighters and this like i said technically is a highlighter i'm going to work with this shade so it's a little bit more symmetric as i've been trying to do this whole video and this is in the shade divine strobe light so it's classified as a different color and to me, it's definitely a different color. It's not like so different that you would be able to catch it in a lineup, but it's it's different, you know? I'm not mad to have the two shades, but it's it's a slight difference. 
Okay, I just went ahead and sprayed my face because it really needed it. But as you can see, this side looks nice and seamless and so does this. I'm not going to sit here and say that the hourglass powders aren't great. I just think that hourglass has an issue when it comes to curating the colors that are going to work best on darker skin. I just really, in my opinion, the under eye setting powder for this year's formula just is not a, as good of an option for darker skin as last year's. Let me see if I can get this palette open. The under eye setting powder for this year's is just not nearly as good as last year's in my opinion. Last year's is clearly deeper allowing for more skin tones to just be more included in that under eye setting powder. I know some skin tones that were of a deeper, deeper complexion were able to use that, that powder as a bronzer from last year and that's fine. But I just like the fact that there was more versatility in that under eye setting powder. As for the blushes, I think it really just depends pins this one once again the true blush tones are just a tinge bit too light for me in the grand scheme of things can I make them work yes but in this year's formula I love that you get a true matte you get more of a marble shade and then you get that like more toppery shade and there's just once again more versatility to use those tones on multiple different skin tones in multiple different ways as for the highlighters, I think they honestly could be interchanged and there's really not a huge, huge difference. So is there one palette that I wish that like could be brought back? Like, do I wish they brought this back for this year? Not necessarily, because really, if we're looking at it, there's only one shade that I really miss from last year's palette, and that's the under eye setting powder. And I have it. So, you know. Coming into today, I really thought that I was going to say, I really wish they brought back the Tiger palette. This was the palette that was really, really great. And this one really, really sucks. But when you sit there and apply the products and really look at them side by side, to me, there's just slight positives for each palette. There's not one palette that is just perfect, in my opinion, when it comes to these holiday palettes. And these palettes are expensive. They're so, so expensive. I'm going to try to get this video up as quickly as I can. Right now, there is actually a 20% off code floating around. If that is still available when I edit and upload this video, I will have it flashing across the screen for you guys. And I would strongly, strongly recommend you going ahead and scooping it up that way. Or, of course, during the Sephora semi-annual sales that they do, if you are, of course, Rouge. The last thing I'm going to do for tomorrow's clip in this particular video is I am going to compare the inside of this palette, which is of course the snake palette, to the one ambient volume lighting palette that I have. This is also a palette that you can get on the Sephora shelves normal. So I wanted to compare to see if the colors, but also the formulas are just slightly better here. I just think that it's really helpful. The, co the tones are just so different throughout these three palettes that I hope it's very helpful for you guys, um, me going through this. And I'm sure I'll be doing some swatches at some point so that you guys can see all of the three palettes side by side to make a better and more informed decision. But that said, I'm just gonna run off, finish up my makeup. This is the third and final day for this kind of review video. And I am so excited to see the results. I'm gonna continue to keep the 2023 palette on on my left you guys is right I think or maybe it's still you guys left I don't really know but I'm going to continue to keep this palette over here and as I told y'all yesterday on my right I'm going to be showcasing the ambient lighting for palette because I loved this palette I loved all the tones I thought all of the tones were perfect for my skin tone and I just want to showcase that so just so that you guys know we have the shades let me see if they even have the shades oh yeah so this is the prismatic strobe light which is the highlighter transcendent light and then ethereal light so those are the three tones that they have in this palette and i'm gonna do exactly what i've been doing every day i've been showcasing this palette so i'm gonna pull my favorite brush which is this sephora 73 brush and first things first of course i'm gonna take the under eye setting powder that they have in this palette which 
you guys have seen this multiple times so it's not gonna be super super different than what you've seen and I will come in as always so you guys can see the difference between the two sides I have the same concealer and foundation combination on today so nothing crazy different okay so my whole under eye has been set now I'm gonna flip the brush over and in this palette I prefer to use this tone for my under eyes and this as like a bronzer setting my whole face so we're gonna do that and the shade that I'm using right now is in the shade prismatic strobe no that doesn't make sense it's in ethereal light and as you can see the ethereal light just blends in to the skin tone this just looks a lot more effortless and that's the aesthetic of hourglass they want things to blend in to look effortless and the fact that this just looks jarring it's so light for the skin tone as you can see this is just a lot more illuminating whereas this is a subtle illumination and that's the difference between knowing if the shade that you're using in the hourglass powder is actually for your skin tone here it's a subtle illumination here it's a lot more illuminating and these i have my lights pretty much the same area and like I said, same products everywhere. And I just set only the spots that you guys saw. Now I wanna go ahead and set my base slash use the bronzer tone. Let me just show you guys those separated. I'm gonna clean off the brush that I've been using, which I think this is just from a BK Beauty set. I just have to use a smaller brush for this product so first I'm gonna go into this tone which is what they call the bronzer again in the shade solar bronze and I'm just going to <laughs> bronze up the left portion of my face I am going to just continue to press it in and as you can see there's really no difference at all it pretty much looked like I just set my face I'm just gonna clean off the brush one more time now the brush is cleaned off again and I'm gonna go into the middle tone in this palette or the middle shade and once again I'm just going to pat 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 in the zones that I like to bronze and to me, this is a lot more subtler, but you actually see a shadow on this side, whereas the other side, you don't see a shadow. Now, can I pull off using both as a face setting powder? Yes, that's because our glasses powders are so dummy proof and so beginner proof. They're not beginner proof financially, but they're beginner proof in the sense that you can't really do anything overly bad with these powders so that's what i'm gonna say to me i definitely would choose the shade that i put on this side which is transcendent light if i had to choose one of the two shades to use as a bronzer but at the same time i could honestly use this as a face setting powder and you know interchange them both so i did not set the middle of this area so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I'm just gonna do exactly what I've done every day and set with my project pan I'm also just gonna take the brush and use the middle shade from this palette just to bronze up my nose like I said I just prefer the shade is it so apparent that you know I put bronzer on no but I do prefer that shade now the last comparison that I can give you guys is highlighter so let me go ahead and throw some blush on I'm gonna do the combination that I did yesterday, which is Mystic Flush and Coral Haze combined, just right on my cheeks. And I'm gonna use both, this combination on both sides, just because of the fact that the this side doesn't actually have a blush in the palette. And there you go. Okay, so I've added my blush. So as for highlighter, let's go ahead and continue starting off with the 2023 palette. And that is in the shade Infinite Strobe Light. And once again, this is in their metal metallic 
formulation. This does blend in with my skin tone, although I will say if you are somebody who likes a shade that is darker, I would not recommend this. This is definitely a lighter highlighter for somebody of my skin tone. I'm just gonna switch my brush over to the clean side. And if you want a darker one, then this one, which is Prismatic Strobe Light, I would suggest, because this is more of a bronzy highlighter, whereas the one in the Holiday Palette is more of a light gold highlighter. Both equally beautiful, but once again, I just feel like this palette truly was made for darker complexions in mind and really, you know, this is where it's at. So give me one second. I'm going to go off camera, finish up the rest of my makeup look. And then I really want to talk about the differences between the three hourglass palettes that I personally have in my collection. But I also want to talk about who they're here for, why I would recommend certain palettes, all of that stuff. So give me one second to finish up my face. Okay guys, so I am finally back after creating my eye look. And if you are wondering what I did, what I used, I did film this look. This is going to be my September membership tutorial. It is only a dollar in case you wanna join. And then you can get a step-by-step -step tutorial on this particular look. But let's talk about my three hourglass palettes. So. Let's talk about the order in which I actually pick them up. To be quite honest, I don't remember which one of these I picked up first. I wanna say the Tiger one from 2022 holiday. Now, when it comes to this particular palette, like I've said many a times at this point, these four are more or less supposed, well, these three are supposed to be highlighters. These two are supposed to be or, oh my god, oh my goodness. These three are supposed to be blushes. These two are supposed to be highlighters. And this is supposed to be a bronzer slash face setting powder. To me, doesn't really hit the mark the best. Not after trying this year's palette. But when I tried this last year, I loved it. I loved it for what it was. I was so excited to have a palette that actually worked for my skin tone. Quite a few of these colors actually work on me. This one really doesn't. I really would throw this one away. Otherwise, I can make everything else work. And so that's why I was so excited last year to pick this up. Then I picked up the Ambient Lighting Palette, and this one was created for their collection. This is in their permanent range, as far as I know, and these all work on my skin tone. They're all beautiful tones. I like to use this one as my under eye setting powder, this one as like a bronzer setting powder, depending on my skin tone at the time, and this is a beautiful bronzy highlighter. If you're somebody of my skin tone, you want to get an hourglass product. Maybe you don't want to buy all six shades. You want kind of more staple shades. This is the palette that I would recommend. If you are now looking, of course, at the 2023 holiday palette and you're wondering, is this something that I would recommend over the Tiger, over even the more permanent trio? Let's talk about it, okay? So there are three blushes, one that is matte or as matte as I feel like Hourglass can really go with this type of formulation. Then you have two that have a slightly more sheen. This one is full on sheen. It pretty much could honestly be a blush topper on my skin tone. It's pretty much only a blush topper. I probably could build it up to be a highlighter. I just haven't tried so far. And then this one is more of a lighter blush. I would say because of the marble texture it gives off a little bit more of a sheen in my opinion than this one this one to me is just the mattest that you will get in an hourglass powder then you have this baby right here which is the actual highlighter and then you have this as the under eye setting powder out of this whole palette the one product that i would get rid of is this this is just too light this i've said a million times but that is in the shade radiant light i don't understand why they didn't just pull the shade transcend transcendent transcendent light from this palette to actually do the under eye then this would have been perfect it would have literally been a perfect palette but it just it doesn't work the bronzer isn't the best not gonna lie at all i really wish that the bronzer was deeper 
but I could have used that as a face setting powder and used the transis transcendent light as the under eye and I could have used literally every product in this palette. Now, when we're talking about the Hourglass formulation, as I kind of hinted to on my third day, which was today, there's really no failing with the application. You really don't have to worry about having an error or a problem when you're applying it. Literally today, I took my brush and I just sweeped in between the two middle shades and I just put them on my cheeks. There's really no failure in the application of this product. It is quite literally if the product will show up. It does build, but to me, these powders build very, very subtly, and I just don't have the time. I don't have the time to sit here and build, 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 so the product needs to already just be geared towards my skin tone so that when I apply it, it at least shows up. That way, the subtle build is a little bit more, uh, you know, it's not as anticlimactic, you know? I can actually see the differences between, whereas with that bronzer shade, that was anticlimactic. It was just, it was unnecessary. It really was. So for me, when it comes to these, honestly, yes, I like them because I like the new blush in the 2023 palette, but really, get this, get this, it's available. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's available in the permanent range and every last shade works on my skin tone. Whereas both of these holiday palettes, because they're six pan, because I think they're trying to cater to such a wide range of people, they really don't allow for the dark shade palette to really just be for dark tones. I really think that they try to make it for medium to dark tones and you really can't do that with how lightly pigmented their formulation is. I just get this. I think this honestly is going to be the last year that I get an hourglass palette. As much as I think that there is definitely that novelty to it, I love the formulation. I think the formulation of their actual products is great, but the issue in the application showing up is just it's just not worth it at the end of the day i'm so happy i picked it up to really fully gather my thoughts when it comes to this brand and you know i have now so many shades that i can play with and get a lot of use out of but yeah if i were you in the grand scheme of things even if you want the blushes you can get single pan blushes and i have those and they work but what i would say if you want to try the non-blush powders get this volume 3 palette get you one blush and you're good to go when it comes to the hourglass product so that's my kind of conclusion when it comes to this brand and these hourglass holiday palettes i would love to hear your opinions down below do you have these palettes do you have more palettes would you recommend people still getting them definitely go ahead and shout your your uh, opinions down below i love to have that conversation with you and also just so that other people can see what other people see and then also if you have a lighter complexion or even a deeper complexion and you've tried these products please shout out down below how they work for your skin tone because i only have one skin tone so i can only say how it works for me with that said that's all i got for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys